matter because they're, they're not they're not well okay we're recording now so now they're gonna hear all this stuff that I'm saying anyway hi um, so anyway this is my 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 exam review for exam two for uh, ENGR 1030 and 1040 uh, this is the last test that you guys will be taking together that are the same exam uh, after this 1040 goes on with Excel and 1030 continues on with MATLAB um, this exam was given uh, in the fall of 2016 Ooh, I need to make this bigger so you guys can see the fonts I had somebody complain one semester that my fonts weren't big enough to see so now I make them bigger okay now you can see them can you see them say yeah I can see them oh thanks that's cool okay so uh, if you have any questions by all means pop them into the chat window um, I am gonna remute you there Patrick and I'll open you back up for questions you got a problem with that Nope, oh. that's good. Okay. Okay, so this is the exam two from the fall of 2016. Um, on this exam, there were seven problems, um, and we'll just go through them one at a time. So problem number one asks you to prompt the user to enter a value of X and check to make sure that the user entered a value greater than zero. If the user entered a value greater than zero, then calculate the value of log X. Uh, otherwise display a note informing the user that the natural log can only be calculated for values greater than zero so see here's a little trick question here it says natural log here but it says log base 10 up here well uh, this is the natural log in MATLAB um, as one thing I did not dock my students for if they didn't catch that and tried to do the log of 10. So, first thing we need to do, um, uh, okay, we got our clear in there, is prompt the user for a number. So, we'll just do a, 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 an input and ask for please input number uh, greater than zero. No, wrong that one on on then um, you're not gonna do that you want it in as a value uh, and then we're gonna suppress the output to the window and then we're gonna check and we're gonna say if X is greater than zero um, then um, then what does it want us to do it wants us to display uh, the natural log so we're going to display um, um, what are we going to display? Um, we're going to display um, log of x is equal to ont. Then we'll do this, and then we're going to because the number we're calculating is going to be a number, and we want to make it a string. So we'll do a num to string of the log of x and close that and close that and then we'll do an else um, display uh, and then what does it say um, informing that natural log can only and, and this is where I cheat and I'm all for cheating you're in a, taking a test you want to get it done fast so boom And now we test it. Um, enter a number greater than zero. So first we'll check with a, a number greater than zero. We'll do a five. Okay, that looks like that works. And now if we do a negative number, and it works. How cool is that? Say, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So there's problem number one. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward don't touch that thing last time you touched that you muted the thing and you had to do it all over again okay I'll keep my hands away from it okay problem number two we're 10 points oh hey we got some other bodies I uh, hope they hope they log in with audio 
Hey Patrick, send them a message to make sure they enter a uh, hookup with audio in some way, shape, or form. It, do it in the chat window there. Okay, uh, so this one, given the following matrix, find the values that are greater than 15 and less than 35. Output those values to the command window. Okay, so we're going to look for our values that are greater than 15 and less than 35. So I'm going to create some variable. I'm just arbitrarily call it a set and we're going to find um, all the values of C and we need to make C first too. I know, I'll get to that, uh, that are greater than 15 and values of C that are less than 35. Less than 35. And we're going to suppress that because we don't want to go into the windows. So we're going to just grab this guy here and we're just going to cheat and, oops, wrong way, and unsuppress that. And we'll make it pretty. Line them up on the right side. One of my OCDs, I like to have nice uniform. Okay, so we found the location of all of the... Um, numbers that are greater than 15 unless there's now it says output those values to the window uh, in exam if that's all it says is output to the window then uh, you, you would get full credit if you just did this and that would give you exactly what except there's an error why is there an error oh because I cleared it you're an idiot ha oh, thank you Um, okay, so now it's on that side. And so those are the values between 15 and 35. Is that correct? Um, we got a 23, a 23 and a 22. Yeah, so that satisfies the um, output to the window. Um, but I'm kind of, I don't know, uh, you can say it. I'm, I'm kind of anal. I like to make it pretty. Um, so, um, uh, greater than 15, and less than 35, and then I would do, uh, so I can put them where I want it an F print and then there's only two digits so we'll do a percent to zero F and um, oops new line get rid of the square and and that and then that and then that and now it will boom we can make it pretty This is not required. For all this here is not required for the exam because um, it just says output. So if you did just this right here, that would give you full credit. Um, okay, I'm back. Are there any questions on uh, problem number two? Okay, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This one demonstrates the ability, first off, to um, make sure you put your matrix on the right side of the clear um, and how to use uh, the find command. Um, so that's what that problem is in there for. So next one is solve the system of equations using both the left division and the inverse matrix method. Okay, first thing we need to do is make our coefficient matrix um, so that's going to be a 5, a 3, a minus 1, and a 4 and a 3, and a 2, and a 2, and a minus 2 and a 4, and a minus 1 and a 3, and a 3 and a minus 2, and a 1, and a minus one. Oh no that's a zero 
Ah, oh, that's the gotcha right there. A lot of people won't notice that there's no Z right here. And then my OCD kicks in and says, hey, you need to make that square. Sorry, I just, it just, that's, that's what I am. And then we need to make our resultant vector, and this needs to be a, a, a column vector instead of a row vector, so we'll use a semicolon. Uh, we can even make it look like a column vector and do 12. Oont. Four. Oont. Then we're going to close with a bracket and a semicolon. Okay, so there's our two vectors or matrices that we need to solve systems of linear equations. So the first one is the inverse method. Inverse. Oh, we got to use the tiki talk too. So we'll come up here and do a tick. equals inverse of a times b and talk and then down here then this uh, oh maybe it's the oh sorry i'm ahead of myself there's another problem in here that we do tick and talk sorry this one we just do it um inverse is the back divide, uh, or this is not, this is the left divide method. Um, okay, and so we should get the same answers for both of them. 4, 3, 2, 7, 2, 2, 2, and we did. Cool. I like it when it works. Any questions on systems and linear equations? Nope. Okay, I expect you guys all to get 100% on that problem. Okay, problem number four is worth 15 points. The reciprocals of factorial form of a convergent series. Uh, form a convergent series. Uh, this means that if you sum them, they tend toward a limit. In this case, they converge to Euler's number. An important mathematical constant that is the base of natural logarithm is approximately 2.71828. And then there's a whole bunch of 1 over factorials. Write a for loop to sum the first 10 terms of the series. Remember, this series must start with n equals 0. Okay, so... We need to do a little for loop here. So I'm going to create a uh, variable outside of my loop and initialize it with a value of 0. And then for um, uh, p equals, OK, it says we need to start with 0. And we want 10 terms. Now that's going to give us 11 terms. Um, uh, yeah, 10 terms would be 9. So, okay, and then we're going to say total is equal to uh, total plus 1 divided by factorial of P. Suppress the output. And, and then see what our total looks like. And 2.7183. And that looks like that right there rounded up. Any questions? Okay. I'm going to move on. Um, use the same series as the one in problem four. Create an infinite while loop with a midpoint break that interrupts the loop with the absolute value and the difference between two successive terms is less than 0 .000001 and the number of iterations is greater than two. 
you must not allow the break to occur when comparing the first term and the second term in the series as they both uh, equal to one hint you need to compare successive values calculated each time through the loop to determine when to break out of the loop and not running uh, and not the running total and use the f print f to output to the command window the sum and the total number of iterations okay so this one we got to do in a a um <laughs> A while loop. So we're going to do some uh, some variables out here again. We'll start with our total that we're going to run, do a running total on, and then um, uh, an iteration so we know how many times we went through the loop. And then um, we'll start with an initial value of our k to be equal to 1 so that we can enter make sure that we enter our loop because um, I'm going to set a condition here on the loop um, so I'm going to do a while loop and we want it to run until um, uh, we're 0 .00001 between it, um, successive values in the series as we're calculating so we need to make sure that it runs long enough. So I'm going to go for, uh, what, oh, I'm using k for my value um, equal, or no, no, not not equal, is uh, while k is less than a big number, a big number, so that we know that we have enough loops. No, not that button, you idiot. Bring it down there. Okay. So now that we're in there, we're going to calculate the uh, each step of the series. So iteration um, and because k is already 1 we'll just go to uh, our first iteration and did I spell that the same? A-A-T-E-R okay For some reason that looks longer oh I got an N in there that's why I was going to say that don't look right so not delete equals there we go is going to equal um, the, the value that we're calculating this time through the loop so it's going to be 1 over the factorial of k minus 1 so let's be the first time through it'll be k equal uh, be the factorial of 0 which is 1 And then our running total is going to equal the current total plus this value. So that gives us our total value. So now we need to check and do our midterm, mid mid midterm, yeah, our midterm exam, our, our mid um, midpoint break. So we want to make sure that it doesn't check on the first two, so we're going to say if k is greater than 3, that way the first two times it'll skip this part, and then beginning on the third time through the loop it will start looking in here, and then if we have, if um, the absolute value of um, iteration of k minus iteration iteration iter it, it's just it looks the same but it doesn't um, of the one prior to that that we just calculated so on the third third time through the loop it'll look at the third value and the second value and subtract them together and if that is greater than uh, less than or equal to point one two three four and a one then we're gonna break if not then we'll just continue on continue on and then here we're going to increment our k so that it changes the value for the next time through the loop otherwise it'll just go on and on and on and on uh, and sound like me 
Okay, and then uh, see what our total is. Okay, let's see if that works. How many errors are we going to get? 14. Okay. Did it, did, it, did it clear? It must have cleared. Let's clear. Wow, it worked. How many? So because we've incremented K here at the end of the calculation, the total number of iterations is going to be one less than that. So that means it went through 10 times to get to that point. But that's not what we're asked to do for our results. It wants to use the fprintf to put out the sum and the total iteration. So now we got to fprintf this. So um, f uh, print f and um, the sum is and we'll do um, let's see we got we're checking five places to the right the decimal point would be six and one to the so seven so if we go just for gins and giggles we'll go eight point um, seven six f in and then this can be a whole number, so we'll just, um, it could be upwards to, well, we know it's only going to be two, but let's go five just in case. And no zeros on the right side, and, and that's an F. Iterations. And then the, the first value printed out will be total, and the second one is going to be K minus one. Oh, and let's be nice and turn that to the next side, and we'll delete that, and yeah, see, that's why I don't like that. That, that should only be two. There we go. Any questions? No? Okay, cool. I'm such an awesome teacher. You guys don't have questions because you know it all already. Um, okay, so problem number six. Create a program that prompts the user to enter his or her number of credit hours. Use the if, if, else, uh, if, else if structure to determine when registration for fall semester begins for each group. Use the disp function to create the, the output to the command window. Okay, so first thing we need to do is find out how many credits. Um, that's going to be an input. Please enter the number of credits. And now we get into a long if else statement if. Uh, credits is um, let's start at the bottom of the um, list and work our way up so if it's greater than or equal to 45 then we'll uh, display um, um, what I don't know you can begin to register on and we're just going to leave those dates because this isn't our test this was a test from before on April 14th so I'm not going to adjust them for our class okay and then we'll do an else if and our next one is going to be this group here from 24 to 44 so if credits then are greater than or equal to 24 and we don't need to do the 44 part because that was done our here already so everything over 44 has already been taken care of so we'll just stop there and then we're gonna cheat and borrow this guy down here and he gets to go to the 14th and then 
I'm a cheating. He, hey, he cheated. Ah, uh, yeah, he cheated. Um, so this one is four. Oops. To the fifteenth. And this one, okay, um, we want it to be, um, uh, between three and zero, so let's go ahead, so that, um, if they enter, uh, I think we, are we supposed to, it doesn't say, but I'm going to put in a little bit to, um, check for a valid input so if it's greater than um, three and uh, credits is greater than zero then you'll register on the 16th I think then we'll do else we'll display a note along something along the lines of not a uh, valid input and then we'll end okay I'm tired I need a break okay so let's see if it works so if I had 26 credits 26 credits I should be on the 14th look at that it worked how about if I had 15 credits, I should be on the 15th. Cool. And if I had negative 6 credits, not valid. Okay, it works. Cool. Any questions? Are you guys still awake? Okay. I hope you're awake. This is the last problem. Okay, George and Flavia have a disagreement regarding their use of MATLAB to determine their total bill at the grocery store. George is convinced the dot product is the only way to do it, but Flavia thinks matrix multiplication is the correct approach. Find the shopping total using both the dot product and the matrix multiplication. You use the tic tac. See, I took the tic toc. I knew there was a tic toc in here somewhere. Yes, I looked at the exam before I pre previewed it. Okay, so first off, we need to get a uh, a vector of the number of things that they purchased. So they bought two, four, two, five, and eight. And then the cost is annoying. 3.12, 1.27, 1.27. Um, 4.25, 1.55, and 3.79. Okay, so here we check the speed of my computer and see what we get. So we'll do a tick and we're going to do um, um, dot, not dot, dot product is equal to the dot of num and cost and um, and then the uh, the matrix um, matrix math um, because we have two column vectors, I need to make one of them a row vector uh, is equal to uh, num. Um, I think I want to do the conversion on that one. Uh, cost. Okay. Um, I will be posting a second exam that I have not worked out with the, the solutions for you to do on your own. Um, 
Okay, I got the same number, 58 or 5789, and oh, look at that. Matrix math was quicker. See, with that extra time, you can go out and mow your lawn. <coughs> okay, that's that's the extent of this exam. Um, I, I, like I say, I know there's there's more problems on the other exam, um, but I don't think it's any harder than this exam showed to be. Um, um, I don't think there was anything. I think there were, if I remember correctly, there are 12 problems on the other exam. But a lot of them are just one or two line replies. Uh, there are probably, you know, lines of code to solve. I will post this exam with this solution on the website so you can have it with the video in case you want to look through the video and watch how stupid I was. Um, so and it, it took me 30 minutes to go through this exam and that was with doing a lot of extra explaining I don't expect the other exam to be much harder in fact let's um, go into the editor and do a can't have that um boy you're texting my memory now as a couple weeks ago that I worked that exam I don't recall I don't know Um, uh, I guess for those of you who aren't looking at my screen and seeing the questions the, that question posed was will there be graphing or plotting on the exam um, I'm not sure I don't remember and I'm going to unmute you guys now because I'm done and you can ask your questions without having to type them you be unmuted you are being recorded too. You guys any questions on this exam? Uh, you know, other than the ones that you've already asked? Uh, anything with any of the procedures? Or?